Uh, so continuing from, uh, from Nick's setup, uh, what we want to do, we have on one side these uh, graded matrix factorizations. And of uh, some ring, what was it? S, S and W. And on the other side, we have uh, this category of coherent sheaves on, is it Y? Right? Okay, I'll call it X anyway. Some projective. Projective hypersurface. Uh, and we want to connect between them. So the, the strategy for this is going to be the following. First of all, uh, this equivalence that uh, Lena described with the category of singularities. So this still holds in the graded case. Some uh, graded category of singularities of S mod W, and uh, and I'm gonna connect between these two. So uh, so how is that gonna happen? The the idea is that both of these things are quotients of the same. Category by uh, by different subcategories, and this category is just the category of all graded S mod W models, so the bounded derived category. So it has projections to these two, and then uh, the map from here to here will be by taking uh, the adjoint this map and composing and then also there's an adjoint here so you get you get these two maps <coughs> um, so to be more uh, more precise so suppose we have this uh, what yeah. is X, X. OK, so x, what's x? Let's call this ring A. So x is, x is the projective variety corresponding to A. So it's for the benefit of uh, those who haven't seen this. Hmm? So it is a small factor. What? It is a small factor. Right. Yeah, x is small. Smooth projective variety. Uh, and what is this? So uh, this ring A is a graded ring, a z-graded ring. And that's the same as having a, an action of the multiplicative group on the, on the variety corresponding to A. So this uh, projective of A is just the variety corresponding to A, spec A, minus the point zero, and mod GM. Mm, so so why, why is this a quotient of this? <coughs> So, yeah. Ah, GM, this is a, well, a, the multiplicative group of the field, like as an algebraic group. Okay, let's say C star. Okay. <laughs> Maybe better. Sorry. Uh, so what, let's, let's think what are varieties on X? What are sheaves on X? Sorry. Uh, so so if you look at spec A, 
is uh, sitting inside a fine space, it's this kind of cone, right? It has an action of C star. It's stable under this action. And what we want to do is we want to remove zero and then mod out the C star action so we can think of X as kind of sitting here. Ideologically, just pictorially, not, not really. Uh, and then what is the sheaf on X? So it should be sheaf, sheaves on X. Correspond to uh, C star equivariant sheaves on on spec A, right? But uh, if you think about it, if something is concentrated at zero, then it has no no effect on what we get on X. Right, so we should mod out, mod out by sheaves supported at zero. <coughs> and now, uh, when you translate to the algebraic terms and C star equivariant sheaves on spec A, these are just. Uh, graded A modules. And these are torsion modules. So torsion modules, uh, some, some definition, but you can just think about it as finite dimensional modules in this case. So any finite dimensional uh, A module is a torsion module. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> so from this point on, if you don't know what sheaves are, then you can just think of graded A modules, just some uh, hopefully more more explicit algebraic object. So what did we get? We get this uh, quotient. From graded A modules to to coherent sheaves on x, and this is an equivalence with this, this quotient. Okay? Uh, and let's just uh, remind, so we have, let's put it here, so we have We have this projection, and from uh, Lennon's talk, we had this other projection to, to the category of singularities. Okay, so we have these two projections, and uh, and now uh, I was lying a bit. So, in order to get the adjoints, what I have to do is restrict myself to looking here at only only graded A modules that are supported in degree well I write here more than zero but you can choose instead of zero any number it's not very important uh, and then just a theorem from general <coughs> a very general theorem says that we have an adjoint which adjoint? Hmm? which adjoint? no both of them Ah, which, which is this one? Let's see. <laughs> so. <coughs> so. 
So this one has a right adjoint, I believe. And this is a left adjoint. Hopefully true. Uh, so what I'm going to, to explain is how, how, to, how to compute the, the composition okay, for a specific case. Mm, and for this, we need, we need the following uh, notion of a semi-orthogonal decomposition. And before I say, just the idea of semi-orthogonal decomposition in a, a triangulated category is just like if we have a quotient of groups to take a, a lift or a splitting of this quotient. Kind of that's more or less the idea. So suppose we have a D a triangulated category. And then A and D. A triangulated subcategory. <coughs> then then we can consider the We can consider this uh, projection map and ask, say, when it has a right adjoint. So let's define define the complement of A in D to be this uh, A orthogonal, all B in D, such that on B A is zero for all A and A. Okay, then this is, uh, this is also a triangulated subcategory. That's uh, rather easy to check. And the lemma says the following. So let's call this P. B has a right adjoint if and only if uh, we have the following conditions. So for every x, there exists an exact triangle. form, oh, probably here it's invisible, so, okay. of the form x with b and a, and this is in the complement, and this is in a. Okay, so basically it asks that the, that the complement in a generate the whole category in some sense. Okay, and uh, <clears throat> so why is this useful? Uh, so now to compute the right adjoint, what do we have to do? If we have some, some category A, we have to take uh, an X which represents, represents an object here, just some representative, decompose it in this way, and then take the A part, um, sorry, the B part, obviously. <laughs> take the B part. Right, and this gives us, <coughs> and just a remark, <coughs> so 
So in this situation, we say that uh, <coughs> that this is a semi-orthogonal decomposition of, of D. And and we have that a orthogonal is is equivalent to d mod a. A just via the projection. Okay, so let's uh, let's see how it works in our case. Hmm? Yes. What, left the joint? Yes. From B. OK, I won't argue. <laughs> I think I checked it, but uh, it's, uh, it's easy to check anyway. It's one of them. <laughs> uh, in any case, so in our case, In our case, we have two, two decompositions of, of this category. So first, corresponding to, to the coherent sheaves. So what did we say? We said that coherent sheaves are graded A modules mod out by torsion. So if I take here all, all torsion modules in degree more than zero, then the claim is that the the complement here will be something we'll call d zero and will be equivalent to d b co x. Okay, and the other decomposition. So now I want to get the category of singularities. So I have to mod out by, by perfect complexes, right? which are just bounded complexes of locally free sheaves. Let's call this P. And here I get some category T0, which is equivalent to To the category of singularities. Okay. Questions? Uh, yeah, of course. You have a joint? Yeah, but this is some uh, general thing. It's just uh, algebra. Old results of algebra, which apply in more general setting than this, like Gorenstein algebra, something like this. <coughs> No, these decompositions. Why, uh, why are these semi-orthogonal decompositions? So yeah. you have to check okay. the limits. It should not prove the There's no proof that actually yeah. You have to prove the condition. You have to prove the cases of decomposition of any It's not obvious. Yeah, it's not obvious. The existence of the decomposition is a general thing. Yeah, it's a general thing. And uh, also, it's not a completely trivial thing. You see, here it's. This is on the left, and this is on the right. It's just some, uh, but it's not not very, not very involved. Okay. So. Uh, 
So now we want to make some computations. Let me just yeah. What time do you think? You define T0 in this sense as a token of the buffer. Now we have to prove it's not empty. We have to partition. First of all, we have to prove that it's not empty. It's not. I don't see anything. Yeah, it's not always. It's just it's a theorem from algebra. I'm not saying it's easy theorem. Yeah. I, I yeah, didn't read the proof. I have to admit. <laughs> so we just ignore all theorems. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have to discuss. No, it uses like. Uh, like the same say there is a theorem. Go for. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So maybe I'll say about this. This is just really general algebra. So why is the decomposition? I don't want to go into. But uh, why is it? Uh, why does this induce an equivalence from here to here? Uh, this is connected to, to the fact that we chose uh, this, uh, this A representing a Calabi-Yau manifold. So it has to do with uh, that you have duality on, on the categories of uh, graded A modules and some uh, uh, properties of uh, X groups with the what with the field so. general statement which applies but I don't understand what you're saying. Mm. You mean when is it a, a theorem of oil? Okay. What do you think one of the distribution the other some kind of the position and the same Okay, so in the case of A uh this A is a graded ring. Uh, is it connected? Okay, maybe let's not be so so general. Let's just take a specific case. Be much simpler. So let's take A. is kx1 xn mod this thing of course it's true in more generality but anyway. uh, so So we have these two projections. Yes. So I believe this one now, uh, right and left. I think this has a rider joint. This has a left joint. So, sorry. Got to be precise then. Has left a joint. Uh, and this induces an equivalence. The compositions are given equivalence between these categories. So the proof more or less uses some kind of duality to go from this decomposition to this decomposition and to switch between them. Because perfect complexes are uh, projective, right? Basically, projective objects generated by projective objects. 
And uh, this is generated by injective objects, the torsion modules. So through duality, they go from one to the other. Now, duality has to satisfy some, uh, some additional thing, which in this case is satisfied. But uh, in more general case, you can say some more general thing. It's not an equivalence, but you can describe the image. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> so, okay. So let's try to uh, to compute something and then see what we have to use. So in order to compute, I should probably describe just uh, describe these uh, p0 and s0 and like what it means uh, to be in their complement. So so this is perfect perfect complexes. degree more equal to zero, and this is generated by all the shifts of A, OK? So what I denote here by R, AR, so if in general, if I have an A module, I can shift the grading by R. So this is what this R is uh, referring to. Clear what's meant? Just moving the grading. <coughs> so this, because of how the notation works, it should be for r less equal to 0, because we're shifting. It's like with a cohomological shift. Yeah. Uh, so what's, what's home from, uh, from a r to some module? This is just uh, m m minus r. Okay, so you see that it's immediately obvious that it's a projective module, for instance. <coughs> and then for computations, this will help. Uh, what's this s? These are torsion complexes. So this is generated by, so these we said are just complexes of finite dimensional things, okay? So it's just generated by the field, okay? Shifted to, to different degrees. And now we can describe home from M to KR. This is just m minus r star. Okay, this maybe if you want two good exercises to familiarize yourself with this kind of thing, to just to, to see that this is true. It's very simple. It's not uh, nothing involved here. <coughs> uh, okay, so let's. Ah, and one more fact that we'll need, so this is something that goes, goes into the proof, is that our home of k and a, this is k shifted by minus a. OK, this means that. Uh, that the x groups, so in other words, it means x 
mka is equal to zero unless m equals n and x to n ka is k. So this you can pretty much. Uh, Anyway, it's a specific, uh, so this is a specific property of this, this algebra or this type of algebra uh, that's used in the proof. Okay? And uh, you can see it gives kind of a connection between the, the torsion projective modules, so you can pass from one to the other. <coughs> okay, so now let's uh, compute. Compute image of K from the category of singularities in the category of coherent sheaves. Okay, so luckily I still have this uh, on the board. Uh, so, so we're here, right? We have k here. So now uh, we want to get something inside t0, right? So what do we need to do? We need, so we need to write An exact triangle T to K to P, where this is this is in T zero and this is in P P more than zero. Okay, and then we need to take this t part and project it to uh, to here. Okay, which means to mod out the the torsion sheaves. Uh, so just before we we say anything, note that if I have this, and now I want to project t to to the coherent sheaves, then I'm going to mod out k. Right, this is going to go to an exact triangle in coherent sheaves, uh, which is going to be T0P. So this means that T is going to be the image of T, or the image of K, and then it's going to be just isomorphic to a shift of, of the image of P. So all we have to really find here is P. So let's leave this here. So now this is just some homological algebra, how to find P. So T, T, whatever it is, has to satisfy next M. Okay, T has to satisfy that it's all its X groups with the uh, generators of P more than zero are zero. Right? It has to be in the orthogonal complement. Okay, so this has to be true. And then, uh, so we can look at the long exact sequence here. So it has a lot of zeros in it when we, when we take home with AR. Right? So this implies that x to m um, 
x then p a r is equal to x to m of k a r for all m and for all r less or equal to 0. Okay, So this is just long exact sequence. You just have a lot of zeros. Uh, all right. But this we know what it is. So x to m k a r. This is 0 unless um, r equals 0, m equals n. In which case it's just k, right? That's what we we said over there. <coughs> uh, so just set. So now we can guess. As we can set p to be a shifted by minus n, right? And minus n. Okay. So and then, uh, and then t is just the cone of this, but I don't really need to compute it, right? It exists, uh, and the point was what I said before is that now the image of t or the image of k. Hmm? You have to check. You have arrows, and they're kind of arrows between two isomorphic groups. So you have to check the arrow sets. Hmm? Ah. You see, you have to write map from k to p. Yeah. And to check. Yeah. Ah, yes, yes. X. Yeah, that's true. OK, but ah. So right, right. So but this is, of course, just uh, yeah. from here. Yeah. So we have an element. Yeah, I forgot. So we need we need the map from K to P, and this is just just from yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's not a very trivial thing, but uh, exists. Uh, and then so the image. So the image of k is equal to, say, the representative, something represented by a shifted by minus n. And in geometric terms, this is just o. O x shifted by minus n. Okay, so if you think about it, something uh, I don't know, strange but uh, interesting. In any case, but we had uh, uh, x home in k minus n. Yeah. Is it just one dimension? It's k, yeah. Home from a minus n to itself is a. No, not the graded home. Graded home is I k. Think. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's yeah. even still there. OK. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so if you think about it, something interesting that uh, when we said, what are sheaves on x? So sheaves on x is we throw away everything on 0. Right? But now, if you look here, what happened, uh, we only get interesting things from things on 0. Basically, we'll get everything from things on 0, from the other side, from the category of singularities. So I don't know what to say more than this, but it's some uh, interesting phenomenon. Uh, 
a ok. <coughs> so, how much time is left? 15 minutes. Okay. So let's compute the, so now uh, for what Nick said, we need to compute uh, kr for r. So we already did 0, so we need to go up to, up to n, right? Um, so this is a bit more involved computation, but not too much. So so now we're going to compute these images. Okay, and then. Uh, the goal is to show that we get uh, we get uh, generating set in the DB code, right? So so consider uh, free resolution. Free resolution of K as uh, A modules, as an A module. Okay, let's write it C. C to K. Um, and now, what we can do, so, uh, so we can look at It's C shifted by R. So is this what I wanted or C shifted by R to K shifted by R. Of course it's still a resolution. Didn't really change anything. Um, but the problem is that uh, now this is an infinite resolution and the the degrees here they're constantly reducing by one. So this is constantly going more and more into the negative part and has an infinite part which is uh, which is all negative so it's not in it's not in graded modules which are greater or equal to zero so we have to kind of separate that out <coughs> and for that we have the claim the claim which is also not not very hard that uh, or more or less immediate that uh, the category of all graded modules decomposes, or maybe I'll write it here, so we have to use another decomposition. This decomposes as um, which side? Let's see. Okay, so we have a decomposition of uh, the category of all graded modules into those that uh, are in degree more zero and those that are in degree less than zero. Okay, so the perfect complexes. So this is obviously a free resolution, so it's a perfect, like a finite piece of it would be a perfect complex. and. Uh, if you know what this resolution is, you know that it has only a finitely many places which are negative and then which are negative. And then infinitely many positives. Yeah. Ah, yeah. 
So there are finally many, infinitely many places it's in negative degree, and then the rest is all positive. So I said the other way around before. Uh, so what we have is we can split it into these two pieces. So this is just saying I cut this, this complex in, into two parts, just, uh, just uh, separate it into the part where it's a uh, negative degree and then positive degree. Uh, this is isomorphic to Kr. OK, and now, uh, <coughs> and now if you look, uh, because r is less than n, So, okay. Ah, so I have to say another thing. So another uh, claim. So something that can be verified is that C R more equal to zero is actually inside of D zero. This is something that can be checked. So. Or t zero perhaps, or maybe in t zero. I'm sorry. No, or in d zero. I want to say it's in the complement to to this thing. Yeah, I think so. But it's in the complement to to this. The perfect complexes in degree more equal to zero. So this can be checked. So this can be checked. And then, uh, so when we project, when you project this triangle to, to coherent sheaves, so we can, we can project it, and we get that uh, the image of k, wait a minute, this is what I wanted to say. So we get that, so this. The projection of this will be the image of k. This will go to 0, right? Because it's isomorphic to k, which is a torsion sheaf. And then this will be, again, uh, isomorphic to this. So image of, of k shifted by r is isomorphic to to CR less than 0, uh, probably shifted by something minus 1, I believe. Or maybe 1. OK, plus minus 1. Not to be, yeah. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the point is that when we look at this part, so if you know what's this resolution, uh, then uh, when we're looking at the part which is uh, before n, uh, it doesn't get to multiplying by anything of degree n. Right? So what was our ring? Our ring was modding out some relation of degree n. OK? So if we don't get to the part where we're modding out anything of degree n, we may as well resolve it just as a module over the ring of polynomials. Right? So what's this resolution? It's just a causal, causal resolution, the regular causal resolution. resolution. So, so if you know what this, uh, what this thing looks like, this resolution, then it's every time you multiply by something of degree one, basically. So if you're going only r places, you don't get to multiplying by anything of degree n. So it's just the same as resolving over, over the polynomials and cutting it off at degree r. Uh, 
Uh, no, they're both graded, but uh, but one one is uh, singular and one is not. So I mean, A is. A is this, and this is singular. So now when we resolve K, this is uh, unbounded. So if we resolve it as an A module, but when we resolve it as a OK. So this is just the Kojul resolution. Right. So uh, yeah, it's not, I mean, uh, yeah. Right, the morning out by W will give you some more relations, and then you have to continue because there's a kernel. And you know that that yeah. thing is of degree, what's it on n steps in, in the yeah. cultural conference? You know it's already of degree um, greater than zero or less than zero. No, here the, the degree starts at the uh, at uh, minus r and then increases all the time. So this piece uh, that we're left with just has like r. Okay, so once or maybe r plus steps, one. Yeah. Already above zero and you can throw that out. Yeah, so you can just cut off at r. I mean, well, what we want to do here is cut off at r. That's, that's, we want the image of this. So we just want to know what this is. So claim is, is just the same as. Because real resolution cut off at R and then mod out by W. Tensor with, uh, with A. OK? So C, CR less than 0 is isomorphic to K shifted by R. I don't know how to write this. Cut off at R. OK? And uh, now just to uh, you just look what this is. This is just a general claim is that KR shift whatever, cut off at R. This is isomorphic to. OK, this is just a, if you look what the complex is, just a classical. So I think this is dual probably to what uh, Uri described, this collection. Right, so we got collection, right? I just uh, wasn't here, so. <laughs> I missed this talk because I had to practice, right? You described always, it's, yeah. Anyway, this is uh, obviously also a generating collection. So. So, are there any questions? So, let's have a 15 minute break and we'll reconvene at 11.45.